ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's time for As the Buckle Turns. I'm Adam. I'm Tim. Hey, Adam. Uh, I know yes. we have to get into, um, go over AEW's Double or Nothing, but dude. Yes. Breaking news. What's up? What's up? NXT defeated Dynamite in the ratings this week. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. They destroyed what? them. Yeah, huh? I can't believe it. Um, I guess that cage on um, that first ever steel cage fight with Tim Timothy uh, Thatcher and uh, the bro, what's his name, Matt Riddle, won over the fans. Tim, what's wrong with you? Because I'm looking at the numbers right now. Uh, AEW had 827,000 viewers this week. Well, NXT had 731. How did NXT win? Um, we're going by golf score. That's what WWE God. told me. Oh, for this is just further <sighs> proof that the revival were jobbers. Oh, for Christ! <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you troll! You, yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm in the in the write up for this. I'm just gonna be like, Tim calls, <laughs> Tim calls FTR jobbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, Why not? no. Uh, <laughs> in the Wednesday Night Wars this week, AEW again uh, beats NXT. They both shows are up this week. Yes, a lot from but last week. Which that's is a great. good good sign. I like to see wrestling fans coming back watching it live. Um, and especially since the idea was that um, the rumor going around is Matt Riddle coming up to the main roster to SmackDown very quickly. Maybe as soon as tomorrow night, because we're recording this on Thursday. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that would be last, well, for the listeners, last night. Yeah. So, listeners, you know something that we don't while we're talking about something that might have happened. That you didn't know when we were recording this. Time. <laughs> Time gets wibbly wobbly sometimes. Okay, yeah, man? what do you think about it? But no, the he had. We do know for a fact that he has recorded a, uh, a segment already for okay. SmackDown. We just don't know when it's going to air. It could air tomorrow. We don't know. But the steel cage fight, I and mean, it was a fight, not a match. It was a fight with okay. bringing back Kurt Angle as the special guest referee. Special Ooh. guest referee. Wow. Um. <laughs> He was apparently a really good matchup. I've heard it was like it was like the perfect way to send Matt Riddle on his way to the main roster, like write him out of storylines and move him. He can move on to the main roster. So, and I know people. If you're wondering why SmackDown and not Raw, whereas like Paul Heyman, who's been a big advocate of his, they're even f said to be friends. Well, yeah. according to um, reports, are because SmackDown is missing Roman Reigns. Uh, Brother Love, what's his name? What's his Bruce real name? Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard. I cannot remember his real name right now. I love how you remember him as his manager <laughs> character, well, but the not the job that he actually has and has had for quite some time in the WWE. I know, but still, uh, Brother Love actually made an appearance on TV at, at Money in the Bank in the Money in the Bank Climb the Corporate Ladder match. Um, mm. So I, that's how I'm, I'm re remembering him, like brother love, brother love. Um, but anyway, he um, apparently requested that he get AJ Styles over back to SmackDown because he needs star power because of yep. the lack of Roman Reigns. And he also wanted Matt Riddle because apparently he does like him uh, and Steve Hope. And he needs those two. He feels like he could use those two the best. Well, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, you've got a... Uh, AJ, who is ultra versatile as a as a as an in ring performer, mm -hmm. uh, and you got Matt Riddle, who he's a striker and technical wrestler. Yeah, like like the best way to think about him is that he's a if this is possible more mm -hmm. athletic Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah. Um, like like it. it basically, I, I, I would describe AJ Styles. Um, he was the. Um, High flyer version of Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah. He was. He, he, he was so, like 
a lot of people would call high flyers that's what they are. They're just flying around the ring. AJ was technical about his high flying. Like oh, yeah. Will Ospreay is technical about his high flying. At the same time, he, he may be technical, but there are plenty of times that Osprey just kind of throws his body at somebody. And he's just like, this is going to hurt both of us, but hopefully I take less pain. <laughs> you did watch AJ Styles in TNA. That he did the exact same yes. thing. He just didn't do <laughs> half the, the, the insane Ooh. stuff that um, Osprey does. Yes. I but. mean, but I, at the same time, AJ has worked. Has, over the years, his mat wrestling has gotten better. Yeah. Like, as, as he's been... It, you know how some wrestlers, as they get older, they have to decrease certain moves. They're just mm -hmm. like, look, I don't have that bump in me anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and some guys never fill the gap. AJ has perfectly filled the gap. As yeah. he keeps lowering his, his uh, high-flying bumps, that yep. technical, this technical stuff keeps climbing and climbing. Like, well, that's the so, thing, because yeah. he, is that good, he is that good. And, like, Matt Riddle... Yeah, he's definitely Ooh. a good guy to have. There's a rumor saying going around that he's let WWE know that his contract with them is his last contract. He's done. He won't be wrestling uh, AJ? after that. Yeah, for AJ. Okay. And so Vince is now going to be using him more in the upper low mid card range to help get other talent over. So that yeah. whole Intercontinental Championship tournament is even a higher probability now that he could win that. I, I would like, actually, AJ is at a perfect spot in his career, age, everything and within the WWE to be that gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Then he's like, okay, no, no, young guy, you got to prove yourself with me. If you can get over with the crowd in a program with me, you can move on. You, yeah. you will cl keep climbing. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, though. He's also the kind of gatekeeper who will then also, in the background, help you on things to help you make sure you do get over. Oh yeah, he's like, I'm gonna give you, ev I'm gonna, I'm gonna do everything I can to put you over, but you still got to get yourself over. Because with the, the crap. thing, because that was the thing, like around like Jake the Snake's era. I don't know if it was Jake, Jake the Snake was the same way, was like this, but there were a lot of gatekeepers that would. They were the gatekeeper. They knew that there was a position, and they didn't want it. Outside of Tommy Dreamer, who wanted that position, oh yeah, he wanted he to loved win a it. title, um, and so if because they can, they know they were stuck as the gatekeeper. Yeah, they were the gatekeeper, but they wouldn't help you to get over. If you didn't get over, no. And someone would go so far as to try to make sure you didn't get over. But Jake never went to that far. He never made it so you wouldn't no. get over. I don't think he he was not he was not the kind of guy. For, in my opinion, I don't know if this is true. <laughs> for sabotaging. No, not for sabotaging. Just he wouldn't go that st extra step to make sure you would get over. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He would do his job in the ring to try to get you over, but he wouldn't go that extra, uh, in my opinion, um, of the man. Not that he's okay. not a bad thing. It's just saying well, that's also a different era, too. So Right. Let's just be clear on that. But no. All right, let's move on <laughs> to the um, double or nothing. And Adam, I have some bad news for you. <laughs> no, no, it's bad news for you, brother. It's bad yeah. news for you. And it's bad news for you. You're still, you still hold that the burden of I... being the predictions champion. But don't worry. And next week, yeah. I will be more than happy to take that burden off your shoulders and bear it myself. <laughs> That's right, baby. I'm... I am the predictions messiah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hold on. Be say. That's BS. But I gotta make this announce. And still <laughs> champion of the predictions here it as the buckle turns. It's me. I'm the champion. Oh yeah. Alright. Alright, anyway. Um <laughs> and yes. How well did I do? Because I, I I do not I did not look at the uh You beat me by one. And it was uh it came down to the uh um casino letter match, which we'll get to in a minute. Yep. Uh, so let's start. Let's go right into this. We'll start with the pre-show. This was um, or the buy-in. I had private I actually party missed versus this. the best friend. Oh, by the way, Trent is one of the best friends. I'm just thinking the wrong best friend when I was saying Trent. Chuck Taylor was the one I was thinking, but I was calling him Trent. <laughs> oh, okay. Half Mike. So I, I knew there had to be a Trent in there. 
Okay. But anyway, this was for the number one contendership for an AEW World Ch Tag Team Championship opportunity. Yep. The best friends won in a decent match. It was actually a good matchup, but Private Party was very... They showed how um, green they were. Um, okay, we'll go with green. Um, they missed a lot of timing spot uh, areas. I do think there's a few spots, one or two spots, where Chuck and Trent were off on timing. But it could have been part of part as fall overall. But and it's not a bad thing. These guys are still excellent in the ring. It's just they need mm -hmm. more experience and more um, time to get over, like to get that timing down. And they'll get yeah. there. But it, there was a few spots that were very, very obvious. And it was just like okay. Um, it just looked a little weird, and it was actually kind of a good thing this was on the buy-in because that, that one of the mistakes I'm thinking of, it was just like, ooh, like you actually had Trent, like, and this was Trent, like, trying to do a move, and he, they didn't get up fast enough, so he actually had to help him or something before. It was weird. It was just like, yeah, you don't want something like that on your main pay-per-view. Um, ah. I actually right. think that one of them may have gotten injured on Dynamite last night, Private Party. Uh, I did not see anything about that I just heard that some, right like, another um, possible injury at Dynamite, and it was a picture of one of the private party members. Uh, oh. So I don't know for a fact. I didn't get a chance to look into that. But overall, it was a good way to – I still think it was a good way to get into the pay-per-view. It was still done really well mm -hmm. overall. And then we opened the show. We were wondering what was going to open this show. I there was There was too many possibilities. Yeah. But the moment that I saw this, that this match was opening the show, I was like, the Stampede is closing the show. Yeah, so did I. And I was like, like, I just which, knew immediately. I disagree. I still disagree with that um, statement, but I understand why they did it, well, because they pre-recorded the um, Stampede yeah. match, and that way... I also up. kind of feel that there was such a separation between the two, Yeah. That, um, that, when, that you kind of feel that there was eight matches of this show... Yeah. And then there was this crazy thing that happened that they were just like, all right, we can't fit this into that show. I mean, I earned that's another rise because once um, Moxie's done and um, Brody Lee's match is done, you, everyone can, you can shower, you can get up and leave while yeah. they're airing the final, this pre-record. I understand. I still disagree with it because the championship should close up the show. But in a sense, right. you're right. It does kind of like it did close up the, the main show, and this was its own right. thing in a sense. But, I I kind of feel that this was just like you could have even called this a uh, a lights out match. In a sense, you could have because it was in some. Uh, like, but at the same time, because they had an announcement, I don't know. It's weird. Overall, yeah. it doesn't hurt the pay per view feel overall. Nope. I just, just still disagree with the booking and the way, but I understand why they did it. Um, yeah. But going okay. into the um, casino ladder match. Okay, they announced on TV it was 90 minutes, 90 seconds before between each round, but it turned out to be two minutes in the match. <laughs> so, overall, I think that maybe they realized they needed, to, um, probably when they were maybe um, practicing it, they realized, like, okay, for these spots, we need more than two minutes, more than 90 seconds yeah. to get people to the ring. Um, especially a certain entry that we'll cover in a second. Uh, I gotta say, really cool that uh, Scorpio Sky and Kazarian started the match. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the fact they both went for the ladders, and they were just—they like, both went right for the ladders, and then looked at it and went, "Hey, yeah. wait a second. And then they put them aside, and then they decided to wrestle each other. They're anything. like, "We'll wrestle." <laughs> it was—it was a nice little, um, a nice little element. Um, and then you keep having people coming out. Uh, the best entry. Was my second pick to win the match. Um, the man I should have known. Well, he caused some major devastation in this match. Mm hmm. Was a little too lazy to set a ladder up to get there. I I know. I know. <laughs> Orange he was, Cassidy. I, he okay. was so dangerous in this match. Okay, Jim <laughs> Ross said it best. Um, I've never been, I don't think of all of us have ever had someone who's been in a match come over and ask what the rules of the match they're in are. <laughs> Only to have Excalibur say, um, Tony told you this like five times. I was standing right next to you when he did it. Yeah, directly to Orange Cassidy. It was, <laughs> oh, like, it was great. Like, I got a comment that, like, oh. 
Like, and the joke was, like, was uh, they were even joking that like it's gonna take him like the total two minutes to get to the ring, and it was basically ninety seconds to get to the ring. Oh yeah, like his entire <laughs> thing. By the time he got to the ring, the next person was just about to come out. Yeah, and he's like trying to get up there and reach for it. He turns the ladder on his side and tries to step on that to get to it. <laughs> it I love like, the fact that it's uh, what well, it was Colt Cabana that came out right after him. Yeah, and they're just like. And Colt's like, I, I'll give you a hand, man. What do you yeah. need? What do you need? <laughs> and then he turns on. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, there were some great spots um, in there. Uh, we do know that at least one ladder was totally a prop because um, when you have Darby Allen do a skateboard move right through it and it caves Ooh. like tin foil. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you, you got to have it as a, you got to have these things as props. Yes. You have to have these things set up. But the fact that it was enough to hold someone's weight, I was actually surprised on how easily it went, he went through that. <laughs> well, it also looked like he stomped the ladder last second. Like he added a little extra just to make sure. Maybe. Um, but that was a spot. Because, because I know from I, watching skaters break skateboards... They know just what the pressure is going to be to break the to break that without having like without kicking through it so hard. Yeah. That you're, yeah. And he sold that ankle injury immediately. Yeah. Like that was beautiful. That was good. Uh, but then the there was a lot of good spots in there. Ray Fiennes was replaced by Joey Janela. Um, he was able to wrestle from what I understand but he was really beat up from the fall and they took a lot of convincing for him to finally actually say no um and they called in Joey Janela to be fill that spot yeah so, um uh, Joey kind of was ineffectual in this in this match overall I think looking at it there this they had a plan that was specific to Ray Phoenix mm -hmm. and then Joey's there and he's like well, I don't wrestle like that whatsoever. <laughs> and they're like, all right, we're going to work around this and try to fit you in as best as possible. Yeah, I'm sure they just re they reworked his spot. They had to, He had to come up with spots in the areas where other people were going to be at the time. So right. He could, um, and he had to work around where the people were going to be already, probably. But the big surprise was who was going to be to be announced. And we yes. both, that was a question, and we both got it right, as in Brian Cage debuted. But yep. not just debuted, he was with Taz. I like it. So do I. Um, he came out and he dominated. To the point where they had to, okay. everyone had to beat him up. Give me, give me just one second here. I gotta go off tangent for a second. You know the rumor of Sting coming to AEW? Sure. What if Sting comes in in the same way that Taz, that uh, Jake the Snake, that uh, Terry Blanchard, that uh, yeah, Art Anderson? He comes in as a manager. It's possible, but and he's yeah. managing Darby Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Taz's big rival in ECW? Outside in wasn't ECW, Sabu. not Sabu. Uh, I don't think it was Sabu. No, uh, I mean no. He did have he did have a number of matches with Sabu. Um, hey, maybe get like been. Raven to come in and manage. Um, oh no, no, we don't we don't need Raven. We don't need Raven around. <laughs> well, here, he's okay? already appeared on AEW TV. Remember, he, he was the yeah. tease for the 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 Exalted One. <laughs> yes. Uh, if he came in, it would make um Luke um Owens uh, very happy of Wrestle Talk. Because. <laughs> He was all about Raven being the exalted one. But anyway, uh, Brian Cage didn't make his um, debut. He destroyed people. Oh. They all had to beat him up, bury him in ladders, and then put up one of those um, fiberglass poker chips on top of him. Yeah, still didn't do it. Then, Dar um, it was it. It was Joey Janela delivered a Death Valley driver on top of that exact same poker chip with him underneath it. <laughs> um, only to basically rage him up and to win um, the poker chip that was above the ring. 
and yep. get a, earn a title shot, which will be at this year's Fire Fest. Interesting okay. note: that was supposed to take place in England. Oh, it is not obviously, but well, they're still no. going um, through with it. it. Will be at Fire Fest. We don't have a date, but uh, for that, and who will be facing? If you don't know the results yet, you'll find out when we get to, the, to that main event. Yes, we'll uh, get to that. Uh, by the way, Brian Cage. His F10, his F5000, uh, if it, the F, uh, the Power Man 5000, the the Spider Bite 5000, I don't know what you want to call it. Holy crap! Yeah, that was amazing. Poor yeah. Darby. Well, we uh, I, we established off of radio that um, was it Wardlow did something similar on Dynamite, but his looked more like a helicopter spin versus yeah. um, an actual F5 or F10. Like um, Brian Cage, because he had more control in the sense that it was looked more like an F five, but he did it in a way it was still um, resembled oh, yeah, an F five. Ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so that was it was a cool matchup. The spots were good. It was like, I like this little mix up, little um, this kind of battle royal Royal Rumble into a ladder match. Yeah. I still think pinfalls to earn the right to climb up is a little bit. Would be add a little something to it? I kind of... Okay, you know what would be kind of cool? Um, that that ladders are not legal. Uh, or no one can go for the the chip or the whatever's hanging above the, the ring. The prize. Mm-hmm. Until there is one pinfall. Like, you don't have to earn a pinfall to be able to go up. Just one pinfall has to be made. No, because that doesn't. I don't like that. I like the idea of actually being a. Pin, you have to earn a spot to earn the right to go up. Doesn't I mean you can't use the ladders, um, to take people out. But like you have to earn um a spot. I don't know. It, it, it's interesting, but well, it is what it is. But it was a good yeah. matchup. It was a great way to open the show. Yes. Um, do yeah, you have that the was actual, a lot of action to show to start right yes. off. Um, do you have the next? Do you have the actual card order? Yes. Up. What was the next matchup? Uh, the next matchup was MJF with uh, with Wardlow defeating Jungle Boy. Yes. Wow. This, okay. This was this, an excellent matchup. I I love the fact that this. First of all, they're the same height. Mm-hmm. So all you people out there who keep saying that Jungle Boy is way too small for to be uh, part of this part of AEW and wrestling, uh, they're the same height. MJF. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, he's freakishly big for his height. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, honestly, if you look at a, at a picture of uh, Jack, a Jungle Boy, in a suit, mm-hmm. he looks, a, wow, surprisingly, surprisingly like his father. <laughs> not surprised at all. Uh, I'm not, but it's one of those that, like, I, I had to check up. I was like, oh, okay, yep, that's... That's Jungle Boy. All right. Yeah. Looks so much like his dad. So this was an excellent matchup. It was a great little back and forth. Um, the chops, for, man. The chops. Uh, yes. The whole going like, come on, let's go. And then um, MJF decides to go for the arm instead, which was a nice little <laughs> way to... And then Jungle Boy fires back. Yep. <laughs> um, the only different disagreement on this one, because Ali Davis pointed this out in his review of Dynamite, is... Um, Jungle Boy won the Battle Royal last night in Dynamite to earn a, the first TNT Championship opportunity next week. Okay. So, but he didn't limit. It came down to four people. Um, Wardlow, I believe, was in there. MJF was in there. Um, Orange Cassidy was in there, and then Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy eliminated Orange Cassidy last. It should have been um, Jungle Boy eliminating MJF. And MJ, he should have beaten MJF here because they would have set up. Because A, um, MJF, who just beat Jungle Boy, doesn't get a title shot, but MJ, uh, Cody, Jungle Boy does because he won this battle royal. It kind of goes off make hurting wins mean something a little bit. But also, I agree with um, Ali Davis on this because he says it's a nice little tidbit that Jungle Boy just always seems to have 
MJF's number. He pulled, he eked out a victory at Double or Nothing. He then eliminates him in the Battle Royal. It's just one of those things you can kind of build this, like, for the next few, like, every time they face off, no how, matter how hot MJF is, um, Jungle, Jungle Boy, Boy always just, has his number. And you could, you could build that up to, so like, when MJF is, if he's a world champion, Jungle Boy finally loses in the championship title match. Hmm. I actually like that. Now, but, at the same time, though, I kind of feel, while watching this match, I, I kind of feel that Jungle Boy did have MJF's number. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he just, he had that little extra, and it just so happened that MJF was able to squeak out the win here. Yes. And that's by, what they were going for, but overall, it would have helped better if it was Jungle Boy actually got the win here, I think. Yeah. But either way, they did, they uh, did get that across, that... MJF got lo- he barely got the win it, here. It was barely a win. He was beaten. He just yeah. he flipped he flipped the pin. That's and all. And he it was, was so confident that he didn't that he was gonna win with ease that he gave the ring to Lordlow and sent him away. Where like yeah. against Cody, Lordlow was at ringside and he kept the ring in case he needed it. So yep. it's a nice little back and forth like uh, type of element. Where it kind of keeps um, MJF, he's still rising, but he's still not there at the main event level because he's uh, he can still do the main mid card, but he's mm-hmm. definitely a future world champion. Like it's a nice little oh, yeah. balancing act. But it was a good matchup. Uh, what was the next matchup on the card? Uh, we have Cody versus Lance Archer. And this is the tournament final for the AEW TNT Championship. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Man. I have some thoughts yeah. on they, this one. Uh, so, Arn Anderson came out with Cody. They once again they did not add Rhodes to Cody's name yet. I'm waiting for that to happen. By the way, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's gonna La- happen. And Lance Archer had Jake Roberts come out. Uh, um, Mike yeah. Tyson, dude. Yeah. Uh, showing well, his age, by the way. But, showing uh, his age. See- just so you know, Cody and him had a little bonding moment moment before this matchup, where he got to oh, rub really? some baby oil onto Mike's chest. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to figure out why, because. So I gotta skip it. Like the match was really cool. Uh, <laughs> Mike Tyson's face when Lance Archer was in the ring. <laughs> who who did Lance Archer destroy? I forget that. I don't know, but he pulls him out trying to impress, like show Mike Tyson he doesn't care who who he is. Um, uh-huh. destroys him, and then did you see the scene? Did you notice the scene that how quickly like, they cut away from Mike Tyson when he was yawning? Yes, <laughs> like he's falling asleep during the match. No, no, no. It was like no, you can tell it was the, the wrong. They were like, okay, let's cut to Mike Tyson, and he just happened to be like. It was like one of those. Oh, they just cut to me. It was like oh, <laughs> one of those like, yawns. He's like, get off him, get off him. It was like, <laughs> get off me. Uh, <laughs> and they, every time they went back to him, they made sure that he was actually engaged in the matchup. <laughs> yeah. Um, but overall, this was a good matchup. It was hitting, having him hit the blackout right away on Cody. Yes. Um, and Cody rolling out was a good way to start this matchup. But there's a bigger thing that we need to talk about. Something that uh, what Mike Tyson ripping off his T-shirt because no. that that was absolutely bananas crazy. No, Jake the Snake trying to bring the snake out there. Uh, I, I, dude, no. I gotta say mm. it was that was crazy. That no. was absolutely crazy. That's uh, not what I want to talk so about. What, Tim, Tim, what were you gonna say? Uh, we gotta talk about the more important thing is that right. you know Lance <sighs> Archer. All, like losing, I cannot mm. believe that Lance Archer, who has been dominant, so dominant up to this point, took two two crossroads to finish him off. That that's crazy. That, that's, that, crazy. that's not what I want. That's not what I want to talk about. The more important thing that we need to talk about is how what? hideous the TNT Championship oh. looked. I mean, I mean, I was deflated when What's Mike Tyson came right out. Like, but then it was like. That's the TNT Championship? Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh my god, it's like, oh, I was like, it's so disappointing. Right you had the fucking AEW World Championship. Oh. It's beautiful. The Women's this Championship. Is... Gorgeous. I'm not so keen as much on the tag titles, but they've grown on me a lot, and they're 
uh, more and more, but they're still not in the same comparison of the other two titles. And then we get this trash, that red strap. Were they going for the universal look? Way to ruin your new championship design. Oh my god, Tim, it was terrible. Tim, sorry, sorry, I got off on Twitter for a second there. Are you, are you talking about the t the look of the TNT championship? Yeah, that's what I I said. The TNT championship belt. It looks terrible. Yeah. You you know it's not finished, right? Oh. Oh, well, next matchup then. All right, next match. <laughs> no, got, yes, uh, I do know that. Oh. I, I do like the fact that Tony um, Shavante did c very quickly point that out on the broadcast because yes. I was deflated when I saw that belt. I'm like, I oh mean, my honestly, god! I actually I like the red and and silver look to it. I, I, I like that. I just. I want to see a little bit more of the, what this gold and nickel play, um, nickel highlights will be to it. I, I don't mind silver being on a secondary title. I like silver actually being on your secondary title, the primary. Right. Because um, you're going for the gold is your top. Exactly. But like I don't like the red strap. Um, maybe when oh, they you're... add the, the nickel and the um, gold trim and everything and everything else on it and it's finished, it may look a little bit better. I just don't like that. I don't mind different color belts, straps. But that red, ugh. but now it does uh, not look good. It I, looks as for, bad as the Universal Championship. No, no, I want you to go. They're they're actually they're, I ran across it while doing a Google search for the TNT uh, Championship belt, and it had the Universal belt and the TNT belt next to each other, mm -hmm. and uh, I you realize how terrible of a red the the Universal belt actually is. And I ended up appreciating the TNT belt a lot more because of it and going, all right, I like you better now. <laughs> we'll see about it. I'll be the one that yeah. determines this. If I actually get that image because <laughs> I see that red there. Yeah, I, I, I feel that there's going to be a lot more gold in nickel on here. Oh, so do I. Then, but they just, like, I'm looking I at the belt. That, yeah, there, there's going to be clearly a lot more gold highlights to this than there is right now. Yeah, because when I first saw that and it came out, I'm like, oh my god, it looks terrible. I was not happy. Yeah, I just. Oh yeah, don't clearly like that. you can see that AEW is going to be in gold at the top of the belt. Um, oh sure. Um, you know that very mansion least, is? So, the mansion is Ted Turner's mansion. Okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, I don't mind the shape. Okay. Of the, the, the I don't mind the shape of the actual. Uh, oh yeah. Plate. I don't mind that. It's just I just don't like the way it is, and that it just looks terrible. But it makes sense when it's unfinished. So Mo what I would like to see is that the the inner circle, if you will, where TNT is black over it. That's mm -hmm. gold. I would like to yeah. see that be gold. And then a circle of silver around it with gold highlights. And then gold highlights in the, uh, in the side plates. Yeah, it'll right. be interesting to see how this all looks when it's done. I'm pretty sure it will look a lot better once we get that um, in there. But until yeah. it does. Um, but it's all due to because of the pandemic and they weren't able to finish it. So at some point. The Cody has gone set on to say he wants that belt because... It was the one that was handed to him, and it was the most beautiful belt he's ever seen. Cody was clearly um, still um, stunned and concussed mm -hmm. from his match with the Murder Hawk because, <laughs> dude, it is not a pretty looking belt right now. You know what? Maybe for him, he's also seeing it differently because what he's seeing through rose-colored eyes, if you will, is the belt that his dad held. That's what huh? the, that's what he said. That's what they've said that this belt is based upon. Uh, it's based upon one of the NWA belts. Oh, okay. It's but I, it, let me put it this way: it's better than any of the NWA belts currently have. Ac actually, I think it is based upon the NWA, uh, not U.S. champion, but National? America National, National Championship. The National the one that, the, 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 the it's just the United States on a red belt. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I think it's ba Co uh, that's something that I think it's they they used that as inspiration, if you will. Well, they showed that they know how to make a better belt 
yes. on that. Yes, Even though do. I'm not just as ugly as it is right now, it's still a better belt than that one. Yes. But uh, when it's finished <laughs> with the gold and everything, I'm sure it will look better. All right, what's the next okay. matchup on this? Was this the one uh, with next... um, um, Sean Spears versus Dustin Rhodes? No. Uh, Penelope Ford was stepping in for Britt Baker yes. to take on Chris Statlander. I, I thought and... it funny here that they were try they pointed out that um, Penelope Ford is trying to crack that top five for the first time in her career um, for, on Dynamite. Loses <laughs> and then makes the top five <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she wasn't bad in this matchup. She was actually no, a lot. No. She was actually impressive. I mean, you knew she was not going to win this matchup. Okay, I gotta say, Chris Statlander, dominant. <laughs> like she is surprisingly like a power move wrestler in the women's division. That I'm just like, all right, I like because okay, I gotta say this. I like guys that are not the biggest dudes on the planet who perform power moves. Okay. Like Taz. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chris Benoit. Eddie Guerrero. These were not the biggest dudes, but their job was to perform power moves. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, no. I'm going to pick you up. Th that's cool. You're Kevin Nash. I'm going to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Oh, you're the Undertaker? Guess what? I'm going to bend you in half. <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean that's why I like Brian Cage too. He's yeah. only six feet. He's a yeah. Re he's a reasonable human being. Kind he's, of. He's <laughs> jacked as fuck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, ah, all right. Um, but yeah, this but Chris was, is that for the women's division. It is. It's. A, it, um, she has a different look to her, and it's definitely one of those like you don't really see that many women of her height. And she's not yeah. that tall, as tall as no. she looks. Because they have a lot of shorter women in um, AEW. But at the same time, if she you put her on like WWE, Triple H would have used her correctly. But on the main roster, she'd be like Tamina. You're yeah. a big power woman. Like you don't move fa fast. Like it would be over you. Like not used correctly in any way, shape, or form. No. So no. But oh, no, and it was uh, a, that it was a good matchup her, overall. Uh, her sit out driver. Mm -hmm. Holy crap! Holy crap! That is, that is awesome. Yeah. Uh, also, I gotta say, it is really nice to see a company using pile drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but no. Overall, it was a good. It, it was a good matchup to see there. Penelope Ford did a really good job in her spot. Um, I definitely see some big things for her in the future if she keeps going at the way oh, she is. God, She'll yes. definitely be moving up. She definitely needs more experience overall, but she is getting oh, yeah. a lot better. Um, no, and the I fact say... that she she took a table spot, a ladder spot in the ladder match. Sure, she landed oh, yeah. on Kip Sabian overall, but <laughs> still, that's a spot that you take that was clearly already in there. And then she's like, "Oh yeah, I'm have a match." <laughs> and so uh, it I'll be in that match too. So I'll give her I give her props for taking that spot because that spot could have easily gone wrong. mm Hmm. Uh, and cost her and not be able to get got injured and then not be able to do her match anyway. Obviously, right. they took very cautious on the spot, but still, things can go wrong in, very simply. Come on, Triple H blew out a quad by literally taking a step to yes. hit someone. <laughs> yeah, that that <laughs> anything happened. can go wrong. So, but it was a good spot there. We all knew that um, Chris Statlander was going to win th this one. Um, the next matchup was. Dustin Rhodes versus Sean Spears. Yes. Um, Sean Spears came out in his work clothes because his dress clothes because Dustin wasn't here and he wanted the bell to ring and get an easy win. Played yep. off the whole uh, music thing to go to Zen, <laughs> only to then have the music play again. Brandy Rhodes comes out. Dustin's already in the ring and literally strips <laughs> Sean down to his boxers and his Terry. Blatchard yeah. underwear spot. <laughs> Look, <laughs> it's clearly meant to be a lighter moment on the pay per view. Oh, I know. Um, but the fact that he I, sold it, the way he sold yeah. it, though, he's like a lot of people. A lot of people are like, "Oh, sure, Sean Spears leaves WWE where they weren't using him all that well, 
and he comes over here just to be humiliated as well. Um, here, here's the thing. Here, you get to say no to crappy, crappy gimmicks. Yeah, you can say no to stuff. You he can be like, no ooh, that's not going to work, but... But no, and I, I do agree he needs to settle into an actual gimmick now. Because first yeah. he was the chairman. Then he was searching for a tag team partner. Now he's a newscaster. Now he's, he's got to so settle into an actual gimmick. Now, the whole tag team thing did get thrown off by COVID-19. Yep. So yeah, I think it's that's actually a better way to use him. Put him in the tag division. Find a younger yeah. talent you want to bring up. Uh, either way, on your roster, who hasn't really had a lot of time or someone else and bring them in and put them together and then use them as a team. I mean, big man, small man, small man tag team. You could do that. Young, uh, young, young guy is the bigger dude. Yeah. So, but they definitely, definitely got to settle in on a gimmick for him go yeah. going forward. Yeah. So, but then we got into, um, what was the next matchup after that? Uh, the no disqualification and no count out match for the AEW Women's World Championship. Yes. Damn. Yep. Uh, I think Nyla Rose has a thing against gambling because she was trying to take out everything that had gambling rated prop at ringside. I know. <laughs> Damn. Um, and oh my god, this was hard hitting. It was awesome. Yes. This was, it was this was a damn awesome match, and both looked great in this in this matchup. Uh, Sheeta had Sheeta had to keep going to look for her Kindle stick because it got thrown after Nyla used it, <laughs> and it was, like, it was gone. It was gone, and she had to go find it. And she did bring it back. She used it. I had a feeling that at the end was going to be like when she'd use it to win. But I was thinking it was going to be the first time she used it. She actually used it earlier once she got it the first time. But then she came back to it. Got that. Because oh, yeah. after uh, two knee shots, um, running knees, not a kicked out of. So then she hit the uh, Kindle oh, stick yeah. and broke it. Oh, yeah. It cracked. And then the running knee to win and become the third ever AEW World Women's Champion. Yes. Perfect call here. Nyla got hurt by not being able to be on TV for over a month. Right. Sheeta was able to be on TV for most of the time. That matchup with Britt Baker worked in their favor. It was the right call. Build Nia back up and go with um, and use Sheeta as the face of the company, of uh, the women's division. Um, it was also I a nice little win for her with the loss of Hannah Kimura, uh, her friend. Mm -hmm. So it was a nice little way there to um, honor, um, dedicate the match to. I think she said she did, and yep. just like it's a nice little warm spot, like good little spot out of this uh, terrible day. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll get more on her and Kamora a little bit, but yeah. Um, next up, we have oh yes, the AEW World Championship match: John Moxley versus Mister Brody Lee. Uh, damn. <laughs> Damn. Hey, this this matchup was done well. And by the way, I remember how we were bitching and complaining. Well, I was bitching and complaining last week during predictions about his ring gear. Yes. Only to. Because I, I sent you a picture of this. I take a picture and I'm like, uh, so you know how we were bitching about his ring gear? It's like he incorporated in that more um, mob boss type um, dress clothing. Still with the, some of the, the logos of the Dark Order, but less oh, yeah. featured like that culty like green gear he was wearing it worked it looks a lot better with what he's been going with the character uh, so uh but no great matchup um we knew that they weren't gonna really put the belt on him yet it's just no th th this whole uh I... matchup between like was too soon and it was kind of had they hadn't really didn't have a choice they didn't have other people to really kind of build to to use no but what I like is that this is two guys that have worked together mm -hmm. for a very, very long time. Yeah. Putting on a match that they're like, hey, look, we don't have a valid reason for you to be doing this, but let's just bring the violence. 
we, we brought the violence when we were in CZW. We didn't get to do it in WWE. We got close, but we didn't get to do it. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's bring the violence this time. Let's just every bit of it. Yeah, it was a great matchup. And it wasn't until um, the spot, you re- you, the thing I noticed a lot of people, that they were not walking on that, the, the non-black stuff. <laughs> yes. On, on um, the uh, entrance, I do, I do think that some people did walk over a few times, but nowhere I like think these. Mike Tyson stood on it. Yeah, so <laughs> it, was, it was sturdy enough to walk him, but most of the time they were walking on the black. Yes. Um, so like the heavier guys, I'm pretty sure were told to walk on the black around it. <laughs> Definitely. Um, something like Mike Tyson um, was like, "No, you can walk on it. It's gonna be. You, it'll should hold. It'll hold you." Um, but like. <laughs> I don't even think Lance Archer walked on it. On no. I think he went no. on the side, kind of a little bit on yep. it, but the, mostly on the black, I believe. We know Jake, when he left to go to the back, he walked on the black. It was like, mm-hmm. but it was a nice little spot there. And then to have like Cody, oh. I mean, uh, have Moxie raise up first. Then Brody Lee raise up bleeding. And he's yeah. just like, like he's insane. And then you get a paradigm shift. Um, Nope. Not enough. Yeah. Uh, again, not a paradigm shift, a bigger paradigm shift. Not enough. So he locks in a chokehold, and it ends with him, um, his arm going limp and not responding. Match over. Yeah, they protected Brody Lee in this matchup. He still lost. Oh, they, they totally did. Uh, the, I just, oh, man, the brutality that the two men gave to each other through this match. Like, I loved the commentary of them being like, look, Moxley promised that he was going to bring a new level of violence to AEW. And like, and you're just like, no, he really is bringing a next level, the next level of violence. You wanted him here. This is what he brings. He's going to do this until you tell him not to do this. I think uh, this one, he, I don't think he lived up to that promise in this matchup overall because... I think he could, they could have done more, but because of what the next matchup was, they couldn't really put too much in this one. No, no, no. Um, but it was definitely, like, there were some big spots, and it was done well. I think yeah, when he has, like, a lights out match or a no disqualification match, and you can go to that extreme level like he, oh, does, yeah. he did in um, uh, Full Gear with Kenny, that's the true level of violence he brings. But those are right. unsanctioned but this was, type matches. This was the championship match straight match you know level of violence he's like no i'm still gonna bring an extra level of violence to a match that i shouldn't be bringing an extra level of violence to it it's gonna happen yes. i'm gonna put a guy through the stage okay <laughs> yeah it, it was a it was a good spot and it's kind of rem, rem, uh reminiscence uh of his spot with um lance archer at wrestle kingdom but that was yeah. through a table and this was through the stage yeah so it was a nice little spot that that way. Um, good matchup. Again, I still think this should have been the final matchup of the overall card. But I it feel does that make this is where the card what? ends. I know, Look, I know, man. and I, I, like I said, I understand the reasoning. I'm not saying that you should change it. I do still disagree with it overall. Um, unless you're doing a full-on lights out matchup that denounces the lights out. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, Champ, whatever. The world title closes the show overall. Oh, but, yeah, 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 whatever. Now, other than that, we move on to the Stadium Stampede match, which they still didn't really release the rules of this matchup beforehand like they did the uh, Casino Ladder match. But they, so when they start, we get to the, we go into the stadium and they do the whole football entrance. I'm like, what the fuck? There's a wrestling ring in there. They're doing yep. like a football entry. And then like, I'm like, Okay, I'm like, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm like, ah, I'm a little hesitant on this, but I'm, uh, I'll give it, I'm, I'm giving it. I'm watching this entire matchup okay. overall. But it's happening. I'll, okay. I'll give it. But I, before we get into the matchup, I do have to call, oh, JR, please retire. <laughs> oh, my God. It's time. Yeah, you went out on the ledge to say those numbers mean something. You give Jericho's. You give um, Sammy, I believe. Yeah. And then he ta- starts talking about, I believe, um, 
Hager, and this kind of stops. And Tony v tries to save it by saying, like, maybe it's like his, um, his football number because he played some football. Like, yeah, maybe. And then he just stops. He doesn't talk about the number. Like, he completely forgot what he was doing, talking about. Yeah. And I'm just like, ah. Oh. Oh, like, oh, that, uh, Tony tried to save it. He tried. Uh, I th believe it was Tony. It may have been Excalibur, but I'm pretty sure it was Tony. I oh, I was like, I, I, I don't know if they were calling it live. I missed it. I don't know if he was, they were calling it live or not. I'm assuming they were calling it live. Because if it was, they re if they pre-recorded that, the fact that they didn't no, no, it was live. redo it. it was live. Yeah, that's what I figured. But because if you didn't re-record that with, Commentary pre-recorded. Oof, that's bad. But yeah, that makes sense. But then you had like the whole, and all come out. I was wondering where Hangman Page is, and Kenny's like, he'll, "Trust me, I trust him. He'll be here." Trust me, trust me. And we get the start of the match, and not a bell, but a whistle. Yes. I, will, yes. I was like, I wasn't sure about the football elements, but it actually leading into like this, like, like no, this is of this is how you play football as an in pro wrestling, in a wrestling match. I'm like, yeah. Yep, yeah, that makes completely sense. You, <laughs> <laughs> like the moment that they did the for me, the moment that they did they did the lineup, uh, mm -hmm. and the whistle, and Aubrey blew the whistle to yeah. start the match. I was like, all right, there's nothing serious that about this match from here no. on out. Nope. Like, all of this is just a brawl and a spot fest, and we're going to have fun. Okay, yeah. let's do this. And they charge each other like football players, and they just go <laughs> at it, and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> and then we get Sammy and all that, and then we get, we finally get Hangman Page oh, yes. on a horse. Chasing Sammy down. <laughs> Chasing Sammy down. Boy, can Sammy run when he wants to. Exactly. <laughs> um... He runs into the stadium. Paige follows him. Um, Paige is clearly drunk already. Yep. Um, While riding see, a horse. We don't see Paige that much in this matchup overall. Well, um, he's no, still but he has some Sammy. good spots. But Sammy makes it back into the, um, the arena overall and helps out. And then eventually after about 20 minutes, they finally start to separate out into the rest of the arena. <laughs> no, the, the match was only like 34 minutes long. Yeah, so maybe it was like 15 minutes or so. It's about halfway so, yeah, through. Yeah, I mean... It's about oh, halfway through. Th how... Okay, we've... For spots after that, you've got Hangman and Jack Hager. Uh, 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 we'll get no? to that one. Get, get those okay. first, like, well, I'm talking about like they spread out. Um, you spent most of your matchup, um, at, once they got away from everything, with um, Matt Hardy, Santana, Ortiz... And um, Kenny. <laughs> oh uh, my God, that is that's that entire sequence is amazing. I love how they point out it's like, uh, okay, Santana was it Santana or was it Ortiz who couldn't get into the water uh, three feet of water because he doesn't know how to swim. Swim. <laughs> He's like, yes. um, it's a pool three feet deep, yet somehow filled with the um the waters of rejuvenation pool. Yes. It's, uh, <laughs> Because but my, they don't, they, they try to yeah. drown Matt Hardy, and instead, what they pull up is, uh, what, the, Team Extreme Matt yeah. Hardy gets pulled up right away. Then you get um, doing the finger version, guns and everything. Yeah. Then you get the um, version one Matt Hardy with his caption of his quotes that <laughs> yes, Santana the Matt Ortiz facts. can read. <laughs> yes, I love that too. That's what got me. Like I was paying attention to this whole match, but I kind of glanced off for a minute when I you caught up, it. So like, like, wait, I saw what? the pop. I'm like, oh, what's that? Then I noticed, like, I'm trying to read them, and then I'm like, wait, they're reading them too. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, oh. I'm like wow. Like, I loved it. I was like, I, also that... underwater. <laughs> Matt yeah, he's like, like th yeah. just smiling at the camera. <laughs> yeah, and um, <laughs> like I've got nothing to worry about. Version one. <laughs> yeah, and then like, they think like they drowned him, and Santana or Ortiz, whatever the one was, I cannot remember. Like doggy paddling because he's trying to get to the because he's afraid of <laughs> They're drowning. Just walking along. <laughs> yeah, um, and then Matt comes back up, uh, <laughs> battles around. He 
And literally, um, puts, uh, once I saw that bell in the background, I'm like, someone's being, hey, is, they're, somebody's, they're using it. It's, yeah, it's going. They're going to ring the bell. It's ringing the bell. <laughs> someone's bell is getting rung. And sure <laughs> enough, he then duct tapes him into the, um, into the, the real chair, then puts the other one in the ice box and walks off. <laughs> The next best one was um, when uh, Jericho almost gets a two count oh. and calls a penalty. He calls a challenge to the ruling. Before you get to that one, okay. I got to say, uh, seeing uh, Santana and Ortiz put Kenny through the uh, – it's not it's a barricade, but yeah. it was set up like a table. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. JR had a great call there. And it was like his Kenny's Kenny's uh, fall was stopped by the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Mick Foley all over again. It's like Kenny, you you don't have to take risks like this. No. It's okay. Oh, before, we get, before we get to um Jericho's flag on the play, on the call. Um, <laughs> Hangman Adam Page in the bar. Jack Hager finding. He's like, "What are you here for?" He's like, "To drink or to fight?" He's like, "To drink." Well, I'm here for both. <laughs> I like how both of them finish their drink, and they're like, yeah. "Well, I'm here for both. Let's do yeah. it, partner." And they start Immediately fighting. Just, it's um, a they put bar over brawl. Hank, they put over Jack Hager big time here by yeah. being a lot. I love the fact that Kenny hits him. He's like, and Jack Hager just stands there, and he's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> yeah, I I actually like the fact that they're building Jack. Not as the same level of monster as like Lance Archer. No, but they're going no, no. This 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 boy country strong. Yeah, like, he's this, country strong. He's a big guy. He's a. Yeah. There's a reason why he's undefeated in MMA. He was a uh, decorated amateur wrestler. There's a reason yeah. for that. Uh, Former WWE champion. <laughs> if um, that really means anything these days. Former world champion. Okay, there you go. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it was a great little combination. Even to the point where they set up uh, a different combination of the buckshot, uh, the V-trigger buckshot lariat, where instead yeah. of together, Kenny hit the V-trigger, then lowered himself so Hangman could um, handspring over Roll and then throw. plug him over. And then the, the shared uh, pouring each other's drink, milk for Kenny, uh, Hangman, some uh, a drink, and then they leave. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, I don't know if you caught this. Hangman also poured some milk into the whiskey and drank some of that. I think, it was, was, I think when he was um, putting it down, some spilt over it. Like, it oh, shot no, no, out. no. He poured. Oh, he did? Okay. No. Yeah. I didn't notice. I do remember seeing His drink is white. I thought it spilled into it, but not actually him no. putting it. But yeah, they drink it and they leave. That was a nice yep. spot. But then we got Jericho um, getting a uh, near pinfall. Aubrey calls it two. He's like, he, he's like, I'm challenging the call. He like, challenges what? the call on the play. <laughs> Aubrey, I love Aubrey's response. Like, what? You're calling? Like, fine, I'll, I'll review it. Goes into a tent. I'll review it. <laughs> Jericho I literally right made the call, but okay. And then, and then zips up the tent and it's like, wait, what are you doing in here? <laughs> like, like, what are you doing? Like, get I was like, fine. Like, like and, put that back. And then it goes like, to the replay. Was like, yeah. It's like, what the hell like, Two counts. Like, it's like. You're a shitty ref. It's like, it's like, <laughs> I love the fact that the Jericho that we have in this match is like the drunken stepdad who <laughs> <laughs> that you're like, look, you you married my mom after my, after my dad died. You're, you're in your fifties. <laughs> dad died young, okay, and I'm thirty, and I have to deal with you. And why are you drinking so much champagne? Yeah. Why? <laughs> it was, um, it was so great. Like this is a nice little element there. Uh, oh, we forgot the, the big spot for Hangman Page and Kenny. All the candy glass of the little bubbly. Oh, oh yes, just bought. bought there was an entire case of uh, mm. le bubbly, a little bit of the bubbly, um, uh, the bubbly, uh, and, and just one after another. I like the fact that like. At one point, like Kenny grabbed once, tossed it to Adam. Adam yeah. smashed it. Yeah. Adam did the same thing to Kenny and yeah. smashed it. And they just kept doing it. That's like seven, eight of them, like right in a row. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, it's, yes, it's candy glass, so it's not like real glass, but still, how many they like did? That's I was like, still, wow. Like, it may be a, it's a headshot, but 
It's not that heavy of a headshot. No. No. Um, it's gonna break really easily. But it's like it's just like, bam, bam. Uh, then you have Sammy oh, who wakes up that. because of the sprinklers. Yes. Thinks he's won, he's won, and then Kenny and Matt return in the buggy, the golf cart, run him down. This was just, oh, by the way, this was after um the uh, whole um hundred yard um Northern Light suplex from one field goal to the next. <laughs> I love how um, Matt basically was it Matt or Nick? I think it was it's Matt. Matt. Um, Matt does the Matt yes. does that move. He um, after he gets the touchdown, he spikes <laughs> um, Sammy's head into the ground and celebrates. And then, um, as everyone calls it, the Alex Wright celebration. Yes. Gets, um, gets a flag on the play for excessive celebrating, only to super kick He's like, the ref. What? <laughs> Like, this doesn't even make sense. He's like, I was t talking about doing this, and, and I showed you what I was talking about. <laughs> but the spiking of Sammy was this the best part? Was the best part? Just like, oh, yeah. Sam, he pulls him up, and he's just like, yeah! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and shoots his head like a, a football, and I'm just like, oh, Sammy, I love you. Like, you're just like, you can make any spot. Oh, like, he's, he's great. Yeah. He, and like when he was introduced at the press conference for the when they announced AW, he came off like he was gonna, his whole character was a little prick of an asshole. Like I'm like, which well, yeah. is fine. I mean, you do it right. It, oh, th I, there. That's, I thought but he was then, going to be the asshole came, character. Yeah, but like when since he joined the um, inner circle, like we've seen a different, a completely different sound. Like, and you really get to see how much chops this kid has. Oh God. Like, um, here, okay, I'm going to say this right now. This might be either stunning and brave or, oh, that's a hot take. Uh, one of those two, it, this is what it's, Sammy Guevara, his career is the second coming of Shawn Michaels. Just saying it now. Ooh, that is a hot take. But you're <laughs> wrong. So, what? so wrong. Because there's someone else who's the next coming of Shawn Michaels. Oh, oh, who's this? And this guy is even more dangerous in the ring than Shawn Michaels ever was. Freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. What? No, no, no. See, Orange <laughs> Cassidy has already ascended to a level that no mere mortal can ever reach. I'm truly yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, but then um, yeah. when he woke up from the sprinklers, he celebrates, yes. I won. He gets chased down by Matt and um, Kenny in the golf cart again. This time he outruns it. Um, again, boy, can he run when he has to. I do love this, so, though, by the way, because um, you can yeah. tell they didn't give a flying fuck about continuity or anything. Because oh, of course not. <laughs> it didn't matter. Um, all of a sudden, we saw like, a hundred yards dash uh, of German, of Norman Light suplexes. Nowhere yep. on there did we see these all of a sudden cones coming out of the <laughs> thing line perfectly up. And all of a sudden they are. I oh, was like, yeah. And uh, <laughs> on this this past week's episode of Being the Elite, he's about 40 yards ahead of them. Yeah. When so. he starts to run. But they did a great job with the camera angle of making it look a lot closer. A lot closer. Except for the orange cones. A lot which, faster. Like, he was still, like, pretty fast. Oh, he's fast. Yeah. Um, he escapes it. He's up there. But unfortunately... He's the only one surviving person on, of the inner circle who's now on their feet. Thanks to the sprinklers. <laughs> yep. Um, and then gets trapped. Uh, Kenny catches him um, and then sets him up for the one way angel. On, the, on this mysterious platform over some chairs in, that lead up to an edge all of a sudden. I wonder yeah. why. Um, <laughs> And then we do the one wing angel over the um, off the soft into a crash mat. Audrey Edwards actually had to get a ladder to <laughs> look in to count the three count, giving the the elite the win. I I like the overhead angle shot on that right at the end, where you can just see that like everyone has been safe. Like I I love looking down and being like, is everyone safe? Okay, cool. 
Well, now, dude, you can tell from the way they cra- he crashes into it, it's a giant crash mat. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. But, like, even then, you're just like, um, did, did you pull a muscle? Uh, you know, did you, did you catch yeah. a leg wrong coming through? Any, anything like that? Oh, I know. Uh, but it was like, but you like, can tell. Kenny was, reaches oh. over just like, this is the last little bit I've got now. Yeah. Boof. Um, and Sammy gets pinned. <laughs> yeah, Sammy gets pinned. I like I like Sammy's the one who actually t- is the only one to get pinned in this match. <laughs> because well, because there's only one pinfall to finish. But also I, okay. it was um well, yeah, it's fine, but it's really setting up for Sammy to be the weak link of the inner circle. Yes. So I, when he I, when they turn yeah. on him, he will then go after Jericho and then he can be that um, to help boost him up to that next level of a star. He could turn babyface. Yes, and he'll be a baby, um, babyface um, getting a victory. I think he'll be the one. He, he will put a uh, victory over Jericho. If I was okay. Jericho, if I was Jericho, I would put when my time, I'm done wrestling, I would pick Sammy to be the person who takes me, who ends my career. Yeah, yeah. I like that idea. I like that one. Or, if, but, or uh, Orange Cassidy. Other one. <laughs> I mean, no, no, you don't. You don't want Orange Cassidy because not only will he end your career that night, but he'll take your soul too. Can you imagine, um, if like Jericho or like Kenny or um, Cody, um, picked uh, Orange Cassidy to be their last, like their final matchup? I have it. I have it. <laughs> Kenny Omega versus Orange Cassidy. Omega's final match. It's a seven-star classic. <laughs> because it's the first time. Like, the best bout machine. Uh, no announcement that this is going to be his last match. Kind of like, an, like it, the Austin um, last match. Well, yes. Or... Did, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the week before, Kenny just looks at, at Orange and goes, You know what, kid? If you beat me, I quit. I'm done. I'm out of here. And, you're, like, everyone blows up. So, yes, you going into the match, you're like, Kenny loses. Would he really quit if he loses? <laughs> me and Lee Kenny, you're the executive vice president. All you have to do is just not be in the ring. Hmm. Well, that's and, the thing. Like, uh, he's not, like, no, you wouldn't say he quits, but he'd be, he's done wrestling. Yeah. And and you're like, would, would you really? I mean, I don't believe it. You know? Uh, because you've been on a on a tear this year, you know you you did this, you did this, you got the mm-hmm. championship, you got this, uh, but yeah, Orange Cassidy because Kenny just keeps pushing him <laughs> through the match, ends up putting on like the greatest match of all time. I'd love to see like the entire matchup and be like you, they work it out that Orange. Like, Kenny can't stand that Orange Cassidy has his hands in his pocket. Like, a lot of people don't like that. But it really yeah. drives um, Omega nuts. Like, he's like, you can go. We know it. When you try, you can go. But you refuse. And the entire matchup, they figure out they figure out a way where Orange Cassidy's hands are completely in his pockets the entire time. They, he doesn't do a single move where he can't have his hands out of his pocket. Pockets. They have to be able to be in his pockets. <laughs> okay. Um, and that just like that whole and that's what get pisses Kenny off. He gets more and more. The longer the match goes on, the more he's just getting like, how have I not put this guy away yet? Like yeah. he has his hands in his pockets. He hasn't punched. He can't use his hands for anything. Yeah. And he's just like he just keeps on the ultimate defense. Um. Are you gonna find a way, like, to make like he, he went, he beats Kenny with a roll up or something like that, using his legs or something like that? <laughs> oh, that would be but, that would be funny. Uh, no, I would like that to be their first match. Yeah, but no, I'm just I'm just joking on that one. But anyway, anyway. overall, let's get back to the um, this before we get to the news. Um, but it was a good matchup, Adam. I you like beat the- you beat me with full um with only getting. Four wrong, three wrong. I got four wrong. You retained. Yay! I keep saying four wrong for you because you got your first pick wrong for the um, casino ladder match, but you got Brian Cage right for your second. And I picked yep. Orange Cassidy. 
<laughs> the man who was too lazy to set up a, a ladder. I pit was my pick. <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> no, I knew. <laughs> but it was a good um, close matchup. We both got the question for Brian Cage, right? Um, just because for the hell of it, I said no, yes to a WWE talent showing up on the show. Just to be, for the hell of it, you said no. It doesn't matter because these points don't count. So, yeah. But you retain your championship. Yes, sad news. Oh, it's so beautiful. All right, we got a lot of news to get over in a yeah. short amount of time, Tim. Um, um, hold on. Oh. We got to talk a little something else, though. Um, what? You are now on a two-match win streak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the last time you were on a two-match win streak... Yeah, that was last year. I can't even see it on the current one. I'd have to go back 10. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. It's nice again. All right. So let's move on to the news. Uh, All right. Before, before yeah, we what, move, what, what, oh, yeah. um, just to talk about Hannah Cora, Corona, Kimura. Uh, I can't uh, say her name. Hannah Kimura. Hannah Kimura. Uh, yeah, sad passing. It actually came happened on Friday. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to dwell on it too much just because it's just, it is a, a bit of rough two weeks with wrestling deaths. Mm -hmm. But it is sad. 22 year old act, um, wrestler, future yeah. of stardom. And she takes her, from according to me, Dave Meltzer, she had a lot of um, a certain drug in her system. Basically, she committed suicide. Mm. And uh, due to cyberbullying on. Because of her action she did on a Netflix reality show, that really, because um someone because of someone one of her roommates she kicked this roommate's hat because he accidentally shrunk her wrestling gear that she wore or was gonna wear at Wrestle Kingdom I don't know I think so she overacted and then cyberbullying she got like a hundred of these like things to the oh, point that where sucks yes to the point where like this one with her death Japan is actually considering. Cyberbullying laws now. Just considering. Good. Let's make it very clear. There's a big difference between passing and all that. But they're pushing for these laws for cyberbullying. And um, which is just supposed to show you that how much like that like, death rung over there. Like that happens here. Oh, another one? Okay, whatever. Yeah. So we don't want to get too political or anything, but it is is sad. Um Curry Sane um, was actually saw her last tweet, and it was in the afternoon, and tried to get her help with Io Shirai, and some of their friends over in Japan, but they were too late, so it was uh, a bad um, overall situation. I can only imagine what they're thinking, what um, Curry Sane is thinking, especially with like seeing that tweet and just being just not quick enough. So. But it's a sad day. Um, yeah. hope, so our prayers and thoughts go out to the family. And there's no real easy to transition from that. No. No. Now we got to talk about Britt Baker coming back. Well, at um, least somewhat positive. Yeah. Okay. So uh, turns out. <clears throat> wow. Okay. So it turns out that she's going to be coming back for September 5th uh, at uh, All Out. Yes. Which is actually good news because they originally thought this was an ACL tear, which would have put oh, her out yeah. for a year. Um, it was actually an LCL t tear, right? Yes. It's the lateral collateral ligament. So, which is the, the inside of the knee ligament. Um, yep. And if you actually watch that clip, that's exactly where oh. Nair falls. So it makes yeah. sense. All right, next up. Ooh. Oh, 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 hold on. Oh, hold on. What, 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 what? I'm making prediction. Oh, yes? I predict they will have Britt Baker, um, Kushida for the AEW Women's Championship at All Out for her return. Maybe. Because maybe, they kind of started, sto started a storyline with um, Britt Baker last night, which would be awesome that they continued with throughout the summer with her just being wheeled on to the stage but she's mm -hmm. saying there's a conspiracy against her 
So I think it would be a great way to build up to um, her challenging Sheeta. So, but only time will tell. Hopefully, she will be able to make that um, timetable as she's put out there. So, all right, what's next in the matchup? We've got, oh, um, dude, did you see that picture of uh, Adam Cole at Tony Khan's Memorial Day party? Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But, dude, dude, you're burying the headline. That's not the, I was the, building up to it, man. No, dude, dude, t- no one cares that Adam Cole was at Tony Khan's um, barbecue, Memorial Day barbecue. Dude, that picture has a bigger headline. Not a rose. I know it does. Nia Rose has a Hyrule Crest tattoo on her forearm. Exactly. Do you know how awesome that is? She's a total, total nerd, and it's awesome. Yes, nerds <laughs> unite all over the world. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay. <laughs> uh, Vince McMahon has promised, pinky promised, if you will, under deposition, uh, that he will not bid for the XFL. I believe you mean defamation. He was under a defamation. <laughs> uh, look, I'm not going to kink shame the man, okay? If he wants to be under defecation, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Defi- oh, it's defecation. I, I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's de- under defecation, then. <laughs> but, uh, just for those, if you were wondering why we're, uh, I'm saying, I actually called the de- <laughs> defamation um, instead yes. of deposition <laughs> um, off oh. camera. Off mic, it was just like so. I had to go. With, I had to say it again. <laughs> you crazy son of a bitch, you. Yes, um, but yes. According to, um, I get from what it sounds like, he was asked if he's planning on bidding um, in the copyright rights for the XFL. He said he's not planning on bidding, and there's apparently at least fifteen and twenty people interested in the rights to the XFL. Really? Uh, That's ridiculous. So while he said he's not going to bid, I don't put it past him to like have him like Alpha Entertainment bid. I'm not bidding Alpha Entertainment. Yeah. No. Um, actually, I, I, I would be honestly. We both see that that would totally be a thing. Yeah. Or um, the WWE makes a bid on it. Um. Anyways, I think it's like, uh, but from what I guess the way it was wording was, it sounded like more like no, he's not going to have anything like nothing like he'll be involved in the bending in any way shape or form so like it rules that out only time will tell but you know what's going to happen though right adam what shane mcmahon buys X- xfl copyrights <laughs> runs the league makes it successful in its early first year shaming vince mcmahon to the point where he burns um wwe to the ground triple h <laughs> buys nxt makes it its own company and makes that successful and get some of the top WWE stars who were on their way. Contracts were up over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't really think that's happening. <laughs> that would be hilarious, though, if Shane McMahon actually bid, got the XFL rights, turned it in <clears throat> into an actual ratings draw. And Oh, I know. Oh, no, better right, because we had the better one. Uh, you had a better one um, off mic. The better was, one is... is Ted Turner. Ted Turner <laughs> buys the rights to the XFL, immediately <laughs> dumps double the amount of money that Vince McMahon and the entire budget for the XFL was for the revival season. Okay, so uh, he said he was going to put about three to four million, like about three hundred million dollars for the first year of uh, first few years of service. Ted he Turner did. puts a billion dollars no, into this. No, in the no, first not a billion. Year. <laughs> but no, he puts. Uh, the first year, he puts four hundred million dollars into the the league, versus that was supposed to cover the XFL for the first few years uh, of operations. Yes. No, this Ted Turner puts it into the, the very first year, exce- and it immediately excels to greatness. F- gets a league, um, a feeder league system for the NFL, and it's successful. Vince McMahon <laughs> immediately. Um, Burns WWE to the ground. Triple H buys NXT off secretly and turns it into its own thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it will be interesting to see who um, ends up bidding on the XFL for the, these rights and what people might, who gets them, what they might do with it. Um, it would be funny if whoever does end up with the rights, if 
they actually do make it successful, you know Vince McMahon is going to be pissed. Oh, of course. Of course. Um, so, and yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. What's the next thing on the All docket? Right. Next thing on the docket. Let me move my stuff around. Uh, Nia Jax. Uh, well, she injured Kari Sane. Okay? There. I said Ag it. Again? No. Yes. <laughs> Again. Okay, so apparently there was a botched spot on her match with Kari Sane this week on Raw where she hit the, I guess the stairs wrong, her head hit. And Oof. it was just like a bad spot for Kari. And again, bringing up all the people she hurt. It wasn't that long ago where she did a botched power, a buckle bomb spot to, to Kari Sane. Um, and I did read an article. There were a bunch of people who were saying that it was not Nia's fault. And that okay. Kari was in control of the, the bump at all times. And she just so good at selling it. She oversold it. Or that she just lost... Um, control and it was her own fault. I don't know. I haven't or anything, but based on Nia's history, I'm gonna say it was probably her fault. It could be a combination of both overall, probably. But again, Nia is too dangerous in the ring. She should not be used because she's going against she's going against uh, Asuka at yeah. the next pay per view, and. Yeah, it's going to be, if she injures Asuka, d like, then you have your next, your big, another big start out of action. And what is somebody going to do about it? They won't do anything about it because they're too afraid that if they punish Naya or don't use her, they'll angry the rock. Well, here's the thing. If you don't use someone who's dangerous and the rock gets pissed off at that, that's the rock's thing. The Rock yeah. understands about you have to be safe in the ring. If he can't understand that his own cousin, who is dangerous in the ring, and he's, then they decide not to use it, that's his, that's, that's his problem. Not theirs. Yes. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I honestly think he would understand. But because they're too afraid that they may piss him off, they'll it's just stupid. keep using her. And they'll, she'll keep injuring people. Yeah. But, again... Don't know for a fact for this, but I, I will probably err on the side of caution. It was probably a uh, thing on both of them. But here's the thing, though. Nia has injured enough people that even if she d wasn't have too much to bring, only has a part of it, it's still a bad thing. I will point out another question some people asked, which is actually deserving of, qu of wondering, of why Kari Sane was even in the ring so soon with her friend's death. Uh, Sheeta was in the ring and she was friends with her, uh, uh, Hana, but with Kari seeing, actually seeing her la her friends last week, trying to get a hold of friends in Japan with Io, and missing that, that's going to be an extra amount of emotions and trauma that she has to come overcome. So, probably wasn't a smart thing to have her in action. Right. So I do think that is a, a good question, and it could lead, it could have led to Kari may, making a mistake in the ring as well. So I do think that is justified, and we should point that out. But overall, I still think that I'm sorry, but like even if Naya isn't responsible here for this, she's still dangerous in the ring. We know for a fact, and it's only a matter of time before she ends someone's career right. prematurely because she's um, not good. She's just too dangerous, but. Yeah. Hopefully, yep. so hopefully the WWE will um, smarten up. I hate to say it for Nia, but I'm sorry. It's just when you injured so many people in a short period of time, no, I'm sorry. You know, they have somebody else who's been injuring a lot of people in this company too. But they keep moving, using him right at the top of the... Seth Rollins. You what know, we got you Finn talking? Balor. He, okay. he, he injured Finn Balor. He, no, he didn't. He, that was Finn's how Finn landed. Uh, he he injured Sting. That was a, this Sting. That was a, again Sting spot, and he, him being older. I he injured Becky Lynch. What are you talking about? She is going to be injured for the next eighteen years. I can't what? believe this. What? Wait, are you, you talking know. about her pregnancy? Yeah. 
She, she's uh, permanently distracted. Okay, you got, you got a point on that one. Okay, I'll give you that one. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, you, you, all you, right. You, you, conf- you completely forgot John Cena's nose, though, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that was all Seth right. Rollins' fault. <laughs> we got one last bit of information here for you. This just happened as we were about to sit down to record. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world. Hyrie Von Rotunda, Bray Wyatt's newest daughter. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't celebrate people coming, um, being born. Yeah, yeah, oh, we wait, do. we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. I mean, especially if I catch it on Twitter, like, right away, I'll, I'll just be like, yes, congratulations, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Ho- hopefully things get better. <laughs> yeah, so that's, hopefully That's all I gotta will... say. You know. Welcome. <laughs> hopefully things aren't fucked up for you. Ha 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 ha! Oh God. <laughs> okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Tim, let's go ahead and close the show. Oh wait, no. We got to do one more thing. I've got one more subject to go over. This week's episode of New England. Oh, sorry, we run out of time. No we lives. have to cover. Go right now. <laughs> Damn you, Tim. Damn you. Anyway. This week, we've got a whole bunch of matches. Uh, the Tag Team Showcase, it's uh, still going on. Uh, we got some... Oh, wow. Honestly, I gotta, I gotta hype up this one match. It's a big... T- Woo World Order is taking on Brooklyn Bratva. Two top, top-level tag teams. Uh, and, of course, the show is going to be closing out with the Chowda Championship. I... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, check out tomorrow's episode, and um, yeah, we'll, uh, Tim, there you go. Now you can close the show. Tim. Tim? Oh, 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 sorry, I got distracted by Liv Morgan's latest post. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Is it on, it's Twitter, right? Or, or Instagram? No, Instagram. Ah. <laughs> you know what? Just close out the show. <laughs> Done. Done here. You, you just got you, you just got a little disappointed now. It's not on Twitter. I, <laughs> I'm greatly disappointed. <laughs> All disappointed. right, ladies and gentlemen, you've reached the end of the show. You've been listening to this for over an hour and a half almost. By the time I'm done with this closing, it will be an hour and a half. So go ahead yeah, and give this video much. a thumbs up. You know you want to. It really helps support the channel. Oop. If you like this content, go ahead and share it on your social media. It's another great way to support Zop Gaming. Um, Swish? Oh, he's coming God. up with a, 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 a sound effect for sharing. Swish. No. You're sending it someplace else. No. 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 Just, okay. just let, me, let me do my closing. Let me do my closing. Okay. Let, for the, let the adult in the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am no. the only adult in the room. Well, my room. <laughs> anyway. Honestly, honestly, you're the only adult on the program. <laughs> Probably. Anyway, uh, while you're there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Ding. Ring that bell. Ding, ding. Make sure you hit all notifications so you know when all as the buckle yeah. turns and other content go live. Uh, honestly, though. Honestly, though, if you want to personalize it and just get the notifications for New England Wrestling Alliance every Sunday, by all means, go ahead and check it out. That's, no, that's cool, No, don't too. do that. No. If you want to personalize it, go personalize it for um, the Writer's Mindscape. <laughs> hey, Adam. You know, you know that, that's only on, on your channel now. That's... Uh, the podcast is still up on yours. I, well, I know that, but like anything new is going to only be on your channel. Oh, I know, but still, they can always just get those. Anyway, Adam, you know what? Go get. You can, now you can do it, Adam. Get bent. Like that stupid championship belt that should have been here by now. <laughs>